Hey, what's up everyone? Eric Rossi, the guy with the eye here. Got an interesting question that I think could help a lot of people out and just to give my mindset on it. And it is, should you shoot raw photos or DNG? Now, keep in mind, they're both forms of raw photos, but they're different kind of things compared to what they are. So I'm gonna break down the advantages, disadvantages of what a raw photo is and basically what a DNG photo is and you can make up the mind for yourself. So basically raw photos are digital negatives. Like if you go back in the film day, you had your negatives, but these are the digital versions. So that way you can edit them and they're unprocessed and everything. And essentially that's what a raw photo is. And raw photos that come from a camera are very specific. Like if you look at the name of them after you take them, like for example, Canon is a CR2, Nikon is NEF, Sony is ARW, Pentax, I think it's PEX or PEF, whatever, whichever one, Olympus, ORF, and it goes on and on and on. Now, that can be read by more universal editing systems. Now, don't get this confused. If you're trying to hand over raw photos to a client, they won't be able to view them unless they know what it is, unless they're photographers, graphic designers, anyone knows how to edit. If not, you just have to give them JPEG. So keep that in mind. It doesn't mean it's universally readable. But a DNG is more or less Adobe's proprietary form of raw photos, and it works more flawlessly and they're a little less compressed going into Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop or whichever Adobe product that you're using. But that's the thing with it. This is for an Adobe product. So that's the main differences between raw photos that come from camera manufacturer and a DNG style format um, is the way that it reads into Adobe. But that being proprietary and said, let's break down some advantages and disadvantages just the raw manufactured versions compared to shooting DNG. So I did take some notes to really try and get a lot of this out there. But what are advantages is just raw, once again, that come from your camera manufacturer. You do get a full JPEG shown on the back of your camera. That way when you take the image, but when it goes into editing, all that stripped out and it becomes a raw photo. So that way you have full control. And that's number two, it's an unprocessed, uncompressed image. So that way you get full retention of whatever you want and need to color grade or add or fix or anything like that. So you have a flat photo, that way you can add all the color information and everything that you want. It is camera specific, so that means when you buy a camera, you actually get the ed editing software from there. Now, not everyone wants to pay for Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop or download them illegally or anything like that. Some people buy a camera and use the Nikon specific software that comes in the box, Canon, etc. That will work natively with that because it's built for that and you can do basic editing. Now, once again, I do use a lot of Adobe Photoshop, but I do like shooting in mainly just raw. The other thing is, and some people might take this as a disadvantage and it might be a little confusing, but raw photos, when you edit them, uh, will have a .xmp file with it. So you have two files that essentially work into one for the image that you want. And that extra file essentially holds all the metadata and rulings that you put in there. So that way, when you adjusted that contrast, you changed the setting, all that information is stored, that metadata, in that .xmp. I like that because you can have the raw image without anything, um, and if you have that, in, that file right here, it will retain to that and you have full control to bring that back up and change things and it's pretty much a quick callback. So I'll cover a disadvantage of that also in a second. Some of the disadvantages of just shooting raw camera manufacturer, once again, is that not all software will uh, read it per se, but it is specific, like I said, to camera manufacturers and it's the needing to wait for these bigger uh, programs to come out. But like if you use Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop specifically, like I do and a lot of professionals in the industry or just people in general, you will have to wait that couple weeks, a month or whatever until they release that update to help fix that codec, to help you be able to edit that raw image in raw. So I always say when someone gets a new camera to shoot in raw and JPEG, everyone pretty much has that option now. So that way you can at least get something out of it and that way you can edit your raw images later and you're not missing out on anything. So I think that's one of the big things right there. And I guess the only other disadvantage is you need to keep that .xmp, that metadata file with it as well. If you lose it, it you lose all that information and it just becomes that raw photo again and you need to redo everything. So it just comes down to your organization and how you can hold it, store them both together, you'll be set. But if you delete that XMP, all the color and everything that you had in there will be deleted and then you have to redo it all over again. Let's check out DNG images. Like I said, DNG is more of Adobe based, but it's, it's a little more universal in the Adobe world and it's easily readable. And as I said, the files are usually smaller, so they're not as big as raw photos and they're even bigger than JPEGs because they're not compressed. JPEGs are compressed images. Hopefully you should know that by now. 
Uh, an advantage to some, which isn't my forte, is that it doesn't have that .xmp file, is whatever the DNG holds and you edit is only self-contained within that file. You don't need that extra file. So you, if you need to, if you're not as organized and you don't mind that, this might be a good thing for you. And with all this, there is less file, file corruption. I'm not saying that there's a rampant amount in regards to raw photography, but in you, into using just the raw manufacturer, but it's a little bit more self-contained in the fact that it's mainly just an Adobe and you only have one file instead of two and you're not actually deleting stuff. There were some disadvantages and these are for people who like to convert this stuff, but it's converting from that raw manufacturer to the DNG to use an Adobe. That can take some time, especially if you have higher megapixels. That's also a big thing. And the DNG doesn't really work outside of Adobe per se and a lot of the other software systems. So if you're shooting, you know, something in another software or freeware or something like that, a DNG might not be able to read for that. And the, I guess the other big thing is, if you just save things as, as the DNG, and I think there are some converters out there where you're, I, I don't know if there are converters, so that might be a good question. Let me know down below. But you're kind of SOL if Adobe goes under, for example. So if you have a bunch of DNG files and Adobe goes under, it could only work in that Adobe field. You might be SOL, like I said. So I like to keep more raw photos for that way. But like a DNG, I have the Ricoh GR2, which I use for like street photography. This does shoot native DNGs. So I actually do use them for that, but I also do shoot JPEG with it as well. But 95% of the time, like my Nikon D750 or my friend's D810 or whatever I'm using, I will shoot raw to the manufacturer and I won't convert it or anything and I will leave it as that's so that way I know I have optimal capability and usability later on. DNG strip some of the metadata, which is why I like more of the raw things. So you might like active shadow highlights or whatever. You have more control with that raw file from that. And once again, it's the manual backup. And this is why I think it's the advantage of that .xmp for raw photos is that the DNG you need to save as you go along. So if you have one raw photo, I'd save it a couple times. That way if something goes wrong, uh, you, you can go back to one of them and retain where you were. Because if you do a whole series of edits and only save once and you realize something's wrong, you can't really go back in a way. There are some loop arounds and stuff like that, but keep that in mind. You don't have the versatility like you do from that. Now, with all that being said, there may have been a lot thrown at you, but I do use mainly not the Nikon software because that's what I call my uh, camera, the Nikon RAW version images, the NEFs, because I have that versatility and control later on. And I love having that XMP metadata option. That way I can change things later. I don't have to worry about saving several times and all that kind of stuff. And I don't find archiving and file storage to be that much of a pain when you get terabytes now of storage for dirt cheap compared to where it's been. So that's my thing. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you like to shoot just raw or do you like to convert it to a DNG or shoot in DNG? Let me know down below. Let me know some things that you wanna to add to this or take away from this or maybe you have some workarounds. So that's the longer answer to your raw versus DNG and I hope it helps you out and helps you make an informed decision. Thank you so much for watching. Eric Rossi, the guy with the eye. Keep an eye out. Keep it raw.